G'day guys, welcome back to another video working on the GQ Patrol. Um, this episode we are doing the front locker and the front GU diff. Now, this, this is a weird video because I made this about uh, a year and a half ago or something like that. And never got, got around to posting it, sort of went off YouTube for about 12 months. But now we are back, the patrol is back, so I'm not going to show you all of it. Just, this is a little sneak peek to what to look forward to. Um, but I'm in Tasmania right now, filming a trip with the the guys and all that, so let us know what you think. Um, but this is the intro for this video, which I filmed a year ago, because um, I don't know, I've lost footage and misplaced some, and some's just gone corrupt. So this is the best we're gonna do for now. Um, most of the good stuff is there, but I forgot an outro as well and some stuff on the back of it so enjoy what I've done um, yet again it was like a year or two ago I can't remember quite that long ago um, but we are installing the front locker and the GU diff for the GQ patrol slash Ford Maverick so yeah look forward to it I'll see you guys at the end we're gonna move on to the front diff now now you can see I've already taken this CV out before and the axle that's out too um long story i don't really want to tell you that story because it was a dumb mistake i made anyway so i'm going to show you guys how to take apart the swivel hub on this and slash swivel hub slash axle and then the diff is very much the same i still might do a time lapse with me putting the diff logger in the front but it's very much the same process um except for the front swivel hubs obviously so We'll put a time lapse on that, but basically you want to take the hub off, um, the caliper, and the actual swivel hub. But we'll do a do a time lapse, I guess, of this, and um, or I might view it. We'll see how we go. Right, mate, so the first step is to get this caliper out of the way. Now it's unbolting it out of the hole, and I'm just flipping it over. You probably need a bar for this. 22 mil socket, by the way. Now this should just lift up. That there so it's not going to fall off now yeah. I will replace those later on I just don't have any at the moment but they will be getting replaced next step is to take the hub off so it should just slide off pretty easily now if you're changing the rotors we want to undo these bolts here, but we're not changing the rotors yet. Um, so I'm going to leave them bolted off just for the sake of taking off. But now we're going to need a rag. Note which way this little spacer um, goes. So now those are off. Screwdriver to undo these little Phillip head screws. And then I'm using a pick just to get the little plate. Out, I guess that's that little plate it's not directional but it does have those little um, tabs now the next bit rather need this tool or if you don't have the tool just use a hammer and a punch a hammer and a punch will do and that's our locking nut and then you've got the um, preload on our bearings Mine's actually worn. Anyway, so your wheel bearings are in here. Now this is going to come off. If you're just going to replace your wheel bearings, this is where you'd stop. That's your wheel bearing. Two of them. With the um, cups or races, whatever you want to call them, in there. But we'll do that later. Right, so taking the swivel hub off, 
from here is pretty easy. Um, basically, you've got your two kingpin bearings, you've got your top and your lower, um, and then you've got this base plate on the back that you're going to take off. Also, don't lose that. That is, yeah. Don't lose this. This is for your preload that goes on top. Um, if you lose that, or you don't put it back in the right spot, you might be in a little bit of trouble. But sometimes guys remove them so they can uh, stop the wobbles. Death wobbles at 80 k's now. Okay, so now I've got that top one off. I'm gonna leave the bottom one there. Don't mind that train going through. Um, just gonna undo steering bolt. I always forget what these are called. I forget a lot of things. So we undo him and then go around and undo all the other bolts that are 12 mil. Ah, okay. Well, that proves that you don't need it. There we go. Couple of things I noticed. Um, there's been water in there, there's dirt in there, and there's not really enough grease in there. Which is why we're taking these apart. A little of that. Now this is our CV axle, short end by the way. There's two lengths. Got a short one, long one. Now, if you're dumb like me, you haven't drained the diff oil, so I suggest you do that before all of this. Otherwise, it's going to spew out the side here, like it will in a minute. So I'm going to have to drain that. <laughs> it's so small. I love it. Uh, the other one's large. Yeah, there's not really enough grease in there for my liking. Okay, now we've taken both axles out on the front diff. We're not actually going to start rebuilding the swivel hubs yet. We're going to rebuild the diff. And by that, I mean we're going to put a locker in. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll get to that. I need to remove some brake lines out of the way and then I'll just rip it out. Um, you saw me pull that other center out, so it's going to be much the same. And then I'll just do a time lapse with me putting the locker in. So I'll see you then. Shan't be long. Okay, so finally got that diff center out. As you can see there, there's just the um, axle tubes and diff pumped in there. Um, see these are out. Swivel hubs are apart and everything. Now this diff, I've got my torch. This diff looks a little different because it's not an LSD to the, to the rear, so it looks like a proper diff. If you know what I mean, you, if you're a mechanic, you know what I mean. Um, because like all the gears, sorry about the lighting, but power outage. So yeah, um, I did notice a few tiny spots of rust, a tiny bit on the crown wheel there and one bit on the pinion there. That's because the, when I pulled the diff out, there was a little bit of water that came out with the oil. It wasn't milky, so it was separated and just sitting apart. It's so only a tiny bit. It won't matter. Um, after all that diff, it's not going to be in there anymore, so we won't have the rust. But yeah, so just something to think about if you've got a car sitting there for ages. Make sure there's no water in your diffs, otherwise that's what will happen. Same with your engine. If you leave water in your engine, like where oil's meant to be, it will go rusty. So we're gonna strip this down, pull it apart, and do basically the exact same we did to the other one. Just a tiny bit different since this um, center is a little different to the other one. That's all right. Um, we'll keep going and I'll put you guys on time lapse and hopefully, it was time now at three o'clock, hopefully by 4.30 we got this diff done and ready to go back in, then we can work on the swivel ups.
Okay, let's get this show on the road. Now, it's a bit later in the night, I've gone home, had dinner. Um, hopefully I don't have food in my face, I probably do. But um, we're here back at the workshop, and as you can see, front diff locker is in, rear diff locker is in. That one is basically done. So tonight we've got to work on this. We've got to put the axles back in, short end, long end, swivel hub rebuild, new wheel bearings, new kingpin bearings. I am keen, it's about seven o'clock. We've got a lot of work to do. Hopefully I can get home by 10 o'clock, that would be nice. Um, I've got to clean all of this up too because all that mess has got to be gone because we need that space tomorrow for work. Um, so I'm gonna try and get it done but I'm not gonna rush it because otherwise things are gonna go wrong. And I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna put the new rotors on yet because like I said, I wanna paint these. Um, I'll do them during the week. 
And I'm not going to put the calipers on because I want to clean them and paint them a different color as well. So, yeah. Um, first things first, we're going to clean up these knuckles. So, just going to get a heap of rags and clean them out. And I'll get back to you when that's done because it's just getting some grease out and some gunk and that's all. So, catch you soon. Righto, so I've cleaned this all out and we're about ready to start so first tip i would give anyone who wants to attempt a swivel hub job may be a land cruiser patrol um anything with a solid front axle that you need to do a swivel hub rebuild on get lots of rags get lots of rags and times that by two and then add another hundred rags on top of that because that's how many you're gonna need because it's gonna be messy um so if you're afraid of getting dirty and greasy, this job probably isn't for you. Um, and yeah. So anyway, let's get to it. So first I'm gonna work on the races for the uh, kingpin bearings. And yes, my diff is flipped vertically. So I haven't touched it since before. So that's why it's still like this. Anyway, it should be easy to work on like this, theoretically. First things first, I've got to get these races out of this knuckle. So I'm just going to punch them out with a punch and then we can whack the new ones in. Right, so they're both out. I just knocked that one, other one out off the camera. Um, next step, just clean it up on the inside where the old race was. And then we can put in our new ones. Now you'll need. If you don't have one of these UV kits with all the sizes you ever need, just use a socket and it'll do the same trick. But this will make your life easier. So we're gonna get our bearings and you see we have our race and we have our bearing with its seal. Don't damage the seal, set that aside. And we're going to get this, make sure the cone goes inwards, and we're going to whack it into there. Um, you can lubricate this up to make it easier. I'm going to do that with some CRC, and then we're just going to whack it in. Okay, so both those races are in. Now, before we go ahead and um, do anything else, I'm quickly going to whip these off. Now, these are like seals for the back of the hub. And if I don't take them off now, I'm likely to forget. I'm gonna take them off. See, they're all crusty. Um, and we're gonna swap them out. New ones here, lovely. Okay, so for our next step, I'm gonna um, take the old kingpin bearings off the, um, what do you call this? You know, I'm going to take them off. I'm quickly going to rush them over to the press, press them off and put the new ones on. Now make sure you grease yours before you put them on because they come, they don't come greased and they're not like your diff bearings. They run on grease, not oil. So I'm going to run these over to the press, take them off and put those new ones on. Okay, so I figured out I had to put those bearing presser things on it and get it out in the press. So I've got two new bearings, kingpin bearings on those right there. They're sweet, nice and greased up. You have to do those ones by hand because they've got a the little cover on them. Um, and now what I've got to do is I've got to replace that seal in there. So I've just got to get a screwdriver in there, flick it out. I've got the new one here and we'll whack him back in. Should be easy enough to do. Um, got the right stuff, so we'll give that a go and move on to the next bit. The old one's out. I'm gonna put this new one in. Oh, I'm gonna lubricate it first with some grease and then we're gonna whack it in. I'm gonna use one of these that we use the bearing to push the bearings in, I mean the, the race in. I'm gonna use this because it's a nice fit on the outer edge and it's got a nice handle. So we'll do that. Hopefully it shouldn't be too much of a hassle.
and that's in. Now, I'm going to lubricate the lip on it first before I put the axle in. A little bit of lube on that. Now we've got to clean our axle, and as you can see, it's not great. So we're going to clean that all up, clean the inside, and shove a heap of grease in here and in here too. Righto, here we go. Nice and greased up. This is what we're going to work on. So we're going to replace a seal and a bearing inside there. And then we're going to clean it up because it's filthy in there. So I'm not sure how to replace that bearing yet, but I'll figure it out. I'll punch it from the other side, I think. Right, I think I figured out how to get seal off. Go through the hole here. Big screwdriver. Bingo. Now I've still got to get this bearing out. Roller bearing. Oh, yeah, you're probably wondering why I haven't taken the, the stub axle bit off the knuckle. I'm wondering the same thing right now. Um, oh, well, but. To make things easier, you could separate the two. Anyway. And I forgot to press the record button, but basically I put that little bearing in with the press tool again. And with the outer seal there, which is lubricated up, put on by hand and then we use these at work. This is some flat steel that's bent up and just use that to hammer it in. Just on the edges, on the outside edge, where it's strongest. And it's in. So now we can fill it up with grease and it can be ready to put on. Now it's on, we can start putting our kingpin bearings in. Remember, put them the right way, make sure the little space was there. Okay, so before I go ahead and talk these kinpin bearings, which you have to do by the way, otherwise you might be walking home. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put these seals into the back. Righto, so that swivel hub is on. Now it is time. Do the wheel bearings, the main wheel bearings that make your wheels go around. So we're gonna have to knock them out, clean it up, put new ones in. Much the same as kin pin bearings, but on the same hub, I guess you could call it. So a little time lapse of that. <laughs>
like I said before at the start of the video, um, filmed this about a year ago, so time has flown and I obviously forgot to film some things and I've lost some footage. So editing this down in Tassie, I've just realized that I've missed like the complete like end of this video, which is crazy. Um, so you would have seen the time lapse putting the swivel hub back on um, and the wheel bearing assembly back on. Now I left the old rotor on mainly because I was going to put new rotors on, but I needed to paint the diff and I don't didn't want to paint the rotors because that's just silly. Um, so that's why I left them off. So once that was done, I painted them black with some heat proof paint. Um, then I put new rotors on, I painted the calipers red just because, you know, I was young then. Well, I still am young, but yeah, I wanted them red. Um, they're not really red at the moment, they're sort of like a dully pink sort of colour now <laughs> from the heat, but anyway. Um, so put new rotor on, caliper, new brake pads, and we've gone for the Hulk hub here with the ring there that protects it from snapping easily so this is a freewheeling hub not the auto hub i went that couple of reasons one because i can manually change it just to freewheel and two i've heard issues of the freewheeling hubs not logging in on the gus so i didn't want to risk it so i'm just going with these hulk four drive hubs so far they've worked well on this trip um but you'll soon see in a couple of months um but yeah that's about it so next video will be fitting the diffs to the car and some other parts which I did change eventually um, so yeah let's get straight into it and I'll see you guys in the next episode I guess cheers guys and yet again sorry for posting this so late and not getting around to actually getting back into YouTube till 12 months later or something like that but yeah anyway I'll see you guys in the next video